Hello again, everyone. Hope you enjoyed your break in our first session. We're going to go ahead and start session two. I'd like to remind everyone that we're not here alone right now. We are actually live streaming, and I'd like to say welcome to our guests who are not physically here with us, wherever you may be. And I'll also let you know uh, that we have our networking lunch coming up after this, up on the second floor of the Archie Griffin Ballroom, and we hope you can join us for that. After hearing this next speaker for the first time, I will never view pharmacists the same way, and you may find yourself thinking the same. So please help me welcome to the Brudex stage, Dr. Jennifer Rodas. Let me tell you about Margie. Margie is an older adult who is seen by a pharmacist colleague of mine recently for a medication review. At the start of the visit, as we normally do, we ask, what's your biggest health concern right now? What's your biggest problem? To that, Margie responded, lung problems. She described trying inhaler after inhaler over the past year, seeing a number of specialists trying to remedy this cough that was associated with some sort of lung condition. As we talked with Margie, found out a little bit about her history, about the medications that she's taking, helped put together for her a comprehensive medication list. What we identified was that this cough started right around the same time that she started taking a new blood pressure medication from the class we call ACE inhibitors. And some of you may know that ACE inhibitors have a side effect in some people of a dry, bothersome, continuous cough. Now, Margie, I said, she's an older adult. She sees a number of healthcare providers. She, some are in different healthcare systems, so they don't share an electronic medical record. She has a number of chronic conditions. And in all of that, the side effect of the medication got lost, and it got mistakenly diagnosed as a condition and then treated as such. This cost Margie hundreds of dollars, much inconvenience, uh, as well as a little bit of worry about what this lung condition might be over the past year. Now, this is an example of a minor medication-related problem. Medication-related problems much more severe, and ones even simpler than this, cost the healthcare system upwards of $300 billion a year. Now, we know that we spend too much money on healthcare, and we know that the quality isn't probably where it should be. And our system is shifting, it's changing, to a more value-based approach to care, a more team-based approach to care. So when you think of healthcare teams, who do you think of being on those teams? Probably physicians, nurses, nurse practitioners, dietitians, physical therapists, maybe dentists, optometrists who we often don't naturally and normally think of as the medication expert, as the pharmacist. As healthcare professionals, we all learn about physiology, pathophysiology, pharmacology. But we all learn them a little bit differently. As pharmacists, we sit in rooms with pharmacists and we learn from pharmacy professors. As physicians, we sit in rooms with physicians and learn from physician instructors, nurses, et cetera, et cetera. Just as we, as individuals, have a set of lenses through which we see the world that's really created through our, how we grew up, through our culture, through our experiences. As healthcare professionals, we have a set of lenses that we each see the patients through. As pharmacists, we see patients through their medications. Now, whereas pharmacists are not widespread on healthcare teams, it does happen. We do have pharmacists here at Ohio State that are engaged in healthcare teams caring for patients across the country in medical centers, outpatient clinics, and in communities. We also see this happening. When it does happen, we see some positive results. We see a reduction in hospitalizations, reductions in the costs associated with healthcare and especially medications, as well as identification and resolution of medication-related problems. We see improved patient outcomes, especially for those patients that have chronic diseases like diabetes and heart failure and those older adults. Pharmacies in the community are open on the weekends and in the evenings. So we have accessible healthcare professionals that provide a number of services, including immunizations and preventative health and wellness services. So why don't we see pharmacists widespread? Why aren't pharmacists a part of most of our teams? When you break your arm, 
you see an orthopedic specialist. So when you take five or more medications each day, as an estimated 20% of Americans do, why don't you see a pharmacist? There are two reasons that I'd like to talk about today. Perception and money. The first is perception. When I say pharmacist, what is the image that you evoke? What do you think about as a pharmacist? It's okay. What it might be is possibly uh, someone standing behind a counter counting pills. Um, unfortunately, that's what we often think about. You might consider or imagine one of these characters from popular TV shows. Um, unfortunately, the media doesn't really paint the most positive picture of pharmacists. In reality, pharmacists are healthcare professionals who go to school for six to eight years or more, training, learning about how medicines work in the body and how to take care of people as individuals through their medications. When I went to pharmacy school, as you may guess, what I wasn't hoping to do was work really hard for a number of years so that I could count pills and put them in a bottle. That wasn't really what I was aiming to do. Um, I went to pharmacy school because I was fascinated by how medicines work in the body and what's, how does that chemistry translate to care and to health. Um, I, I wanted to learn about how these agents get into the body and then how the individual patient characteristics impact the outcome of those medications, how prescriptions, over-the-counters herbs, how they all can work together um, or work against each other. I wanted to get to know people and their lifestyles and help them take only the medications they need that would work for them, help them, them understand how they work and why they need them, help them understand how to use those medicines so that they could be healthy. When we think of healthcare professionals, I've talked a lot about teams, um, there's another set of people that we think of in teams, and those are superheroes. So if we think of, you know, the modern day healthcare professional doesn't care in a, by themselves, and I would say if we see movies that have been out recently, the modern day superheroes band together to fight the bad guys. They're getting a lot harder to beat, obviously, <laughs> as is improving our health. As pharmacists, our superpower is safe and effective medication use. So the second reason I talked about is money. Pharmacists can provide the care that I've talked about. It's within our scope of practice. We're trained to do so. However, pharmacists are not recognized as providers of care by the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. What that means is that pharmacies can bill for the cost of the product, the actual medication that's dispensed, plus a small dispensing fee that covers the cost of preparing that medicine and getting it to the patient. The assessment, the consultation, the education, the management of medications, there's no sustainable mechanism whereby pharmacists can actually get reimbursed for that care provided. So as we overcome that perception, we have patients and healthcare providers who want to work with pharmacists who recognize that individual niche that a pharmacist can bring to them with their medication expertise. Even when they want to do so, it's hard to do so because there's not a good way to compensate them for being a part of that team. If you remember Margie, um, I said that she was, she was seen by one of my pharmacist colleagues. I didn't say where or how that came to be. Um, this colleague of mine takes groups of students out to senior living facilities around central Ohio, and she provides no-cost free medication reviews to older adults. That was where she interacted with Margie. It was a chance occurrence that found this medication-related problem outside of that healthcare team. So what's the solution? What can we do? There is legislation that's been introduced into Congress to amend the Social Security Act and recognize pharmacists as providers of care, not just product. Until we can pass legislation like this that allows pharmacists to truly be recognized as providers, which means they can be at the tables with other providers as we're shifting our healthcare system, that they can be recognized um, and compensated for the care that they provide to our patients. Until we have truly integrated healthcare records 
that allow practitioners and providers, whether they're inside a system or outside a system, whether they're in a hospital, a clinic, or in a community where patients live and work, that we can access information, communicate and collaborate through those records. Until that happens, what I ask is that we forge relationships. Healthcare providers, try to reach out and connect with a pharmacist. As you have medication-related questions, see if a pharmacist can help you answer those questions. When you have patients who take 10, 20, 40 medications a day, which many do, those complicated patients, find a pharmacist that you can maybe collaborate with to help that patient navigate those medications as well as help manage them overall. You all, as patients, and your family and your friends, Help connect so that you have a personal pharmacist, someone who helps you keep a comprehensive medication list that you can share with providers that can help you navigate changes that will inevitably happen in your health and in your medicines. And pharmacists, step from behind the counter. Be open to opportunities. Go out and forge relationships. Recognize the skills and expertise that you have and embrace your superpower to improve patients' lives. Thank you.